All right, strap yourselves in, folks, because things are about to get wild. We're diving deep into the story that has the entire tech world buzzing. OpenAI's Sora. You know that super secretive text-to-video AI that's been making waves? Well, it just got leaked. Yeah, you heard that right, leaked. And this isn't just your average little leak. We're talking full-blown digital heist. A group of artists with early access to Sora decided to go rogue, and they shared it with the whole world. Well, let's back up for a sec. Remember, OpenAI has been keeping Sora under wraps for months now. Yeah. They've been teasing us with those mind-blowing demos back in February, remember? Those stunning visuals, the crazy realism, everyone's jaw was on the floor. Yeah, but they've been radio silent ever since, just letting the select few artists play around with it. Right, like a super exclusive VIP club. And then, bam, these artists dropped this bombshell. They created a space on Hugging Face. For those who don't know, Hug and Face is this platform where people share AI models. And suddenly anyone and everyone could generate videos with Sora. It was like they threw open the doors to Willy Wonka's chocolate factory. And everyone rushed in for a taste. But the party didn't last long. We're talking a few hours, maybe three tops, before OpenAI slammed the door shut. Talk about damage control. Yeah, they were scrambling to clean up the mess. But it was too late, right? Oh, absolutely. The internet never forgets. Those few hours were all it took. Twitter exploded with Sora-generated videos. People were downloading them like crazy. Sharing them, analyzing them. The genie was out of the bottle. No putting it back now. And even though OpenAI went into full lockdown mode, scrubbing their Discord clean of any sore leak chatter, those videos are still out there. Like whispers in the digital wind. Okay, so we've got this rogue AI out in the wild, but the real head scratcher is WHY. Why did these artists pull a digital Robin Hood? Well, luckily for us, they left behind a manifesto, a digital declaration of independence, you could say. Laying out their motives for the whole world to see. It was quite the read, let me tell you. All right, hit me with the highlights. <laughs> their main beef? They felt exploited by OpenAI, used as unpaid research and development. For a company worth billions, might I add. Ouch, right. Yeah, not exactly a glowing endorsement. They even called it art washing, accusing OpenAI of using artists to give Sora this friendly, artsy facade. When in reality, their goal is to replace artists altogether. It's like they felt OpenAI was dangling this carrot of early access, you know, the potential recognition from a big player like OpenAI. But ultimately treating them like pawns mm. in their grand AI scheme. And it went beyond just feeling like unpaid labor. They felt misled about compensation for a Sora film competition they were participating in. Really? Yep. And get this, every single video they created had to be approved by OpenAI before they could share it. Talk about creative control. Kind of ironic for a tool that's supposed to empower artists, right? Right. You'd think they'd want to see what these creative minds could come up with. So it begs the question, is this a partnership where everyone wins? Artists get early access to cutting edge tech. They provide valuable feedback. Or is it straight up exploitation? It's a tough one. Yeah, it's not black and white. There's definitely nuance here. Yeah. But before we get too deep into the ethics of it all, let's talk about the leaked Sora itself. What can this thing actually DO? Well, from what we've gathered, it seems like what we're seeing is Sora Turbo Edition. Sora Turbo Edition, oh, like oh. Sora on Energy Drink. Um, huh. Basically, it's a speed optimized version, but it might not be the final product. So a sneak peek, huh? A taste of what's to come. Exactly. I right, spill the beans. What are the specs? From what we've gathered, Sora Turbo is limited to 10 second videos, mm -hmm. 30 frames per second, and 1080p resolution. Not bad for a leak. Not bad at all. I mean, we're talking about unfinished tech here. Mm. And it's already blowing people's minds. Absolutely. And the exciting part is, these are just glimpses into what the full version might be capable of. Mm -hmm. There are hints that there are different Sora models, styles, and modes out there. Ooh, that's intriguing. Like different lenses on a camera, right? Yeah, you could say that. Okay, enough teasing. Let's talk about the good stuff. The leaked videos themselves. From what I've seen on Twitter, some of these are straight up mind-blowing. They really showcase the potential, even in its turbo form. Right. The detail, the realism, it's astounding. Okay, hit me with some standout Sora moments. What blew you away? First up, the dog playing in the snow. The way the fur moves, the snow particles interacting with the dog. It's like watching a nature documentary filmed with a top of the line camera. Seriously, I saw that video mm -hmm. and I was like, okay, Hollywood might be in trouble. <laughs> right. It's that good. 
Then there's the Minecraft gameplay. This one really surprised me. It looks better than other AI-generated Minecraft videos I've seen. The consistency of the world, the way it builds and renders everything, it's wild. It's giving Metaverse is about to become a reality vibe. Totally. And then there's the video of the woman walking through a neon-lit city, almost identical to the original Sora demo from February. The detail, the lighting, the way she moves. It's like they took a single frame from that demo and brought it to life. It's like they pulled that scene straight out of our imaginations. And we can't forget the cat riding a balloon. Pure Sora weirdness. It had this dreamlike quality, like something out of a surrealist painting. Definitely giving fever dream energy. Okay, so we've got the leak. Yeah. The manifesto. These jaw-dropping videos. What does it all mean? Well, this leak is going to have ripple effects, that's for sure. It's thrown a major wrench into OpenAI's plans. Do you think they're scrambling right now, trying okay. to figure out their next move? I'd say it's caused a bit of internal chaos, yeah. This was not part of their roadmap. The question is, will this force them to release Sora sooner than they planned? Or has the leak actually fueled the hype, made people even more eager to get their hands on it? It's like they accidentally created the ultimate marketing campaign. Exactly. And then there's the legal question. Could OpenAI take legal action against the artists who leaked Sora? Oh, wow. It's a possibility, but it would be a PR nightmare after everything that's come to light. Yeah, that would definitely add fuel to the fire. This is just the beginning. The Sora saga is unfolding before our eyes, and it's going to be a wild ride. Buckle up, everyone. We're just getting started. Stay tuned for part two of this deep dive, where we'll explore the deeper implications of this leak, the ethical debates swirling around AI and art, and the potential impact on the creative landscape it's gonna get intense. Welcome back to our deep dive into the Sora leak, folks. If you missed part one, you might wanna rewind because things got pretty wild. We talked about how Sora Turbo, the lighter, speedier version of OpenAI's mind-blowing AI, ended up unleashed on the world, all thanks to some rebellious artists. Right, it's like something straight out of a sci-fi movie. A group of artists taking on a tech giant. It's a story for the ages, for sure. But beyond those, whoa, this tech is insane moments. There are some serious ethical questions we need to unpack. Oh, absolutely. That artist manifesto was a real wake-up call. It highlighted this tension that's been brewing in the AI world. Right, like this clash between the speed of innovation mm. and the ethical considerations that sometimes get left behind. Exactly. Companies like OpenAI are pushing boundaries. But artists are starting to wonder if they'll end up casualties in this AI revolution. It's like this futuristic David and Goliath story, right? Mm. You've got OpenAI this tech giant valued at billions, mm. using the talent and creativity of artists to train and refine their AI. And on the other side, you've got these artists worried they're contributing to a system that could replace them. It's a valid concern. And it's not just happening with OpenAI and Sora. This tension is playing out across the entire AI landscape. Oh, for sure. Look at what's happening in the music industry. Musicians are already grappling with AI-generated music. That sounds eerily similar to their own work. Yeah, I saw a video the other day of an AI-generated song that sounded exactly like a, a famous pop star. I mean, if you close your eyes, you yeah. would swear it was the real deal. Right, and visual artists are seeing their unique styles replicated by AI image generators. It's raising all sorts of questions about copyright, ownership, and what it even means to be a creative in this new world. It's mind-boggling how fast this technology is evolving, and it really makes you wonder, where do we draw the line? Is it fair for these AI companies to profit from the work of artists without directly compensating them. That's the million dollar question. I mean, these artists are pouring their hearts and souls into their work, and then it's being used to train AIs that could potentially put them out of a job. It's a tough one, and honestly, it's a question we're all gonna be grappling with for years to come. Yeah, there's no easy answer. I admit I get caught up in the excitement of these new AI tools, but then I have to take a step back and think about the human cost. We can't just blindly embrace this technology without considering the potential consequences for the people whose livelihoods depend on creativity. I completely agree. We need to start having serious conversations about fair compensation, attribution, and how we can ethically use AI-generated content without devaluing the work of human artists. And those conversations need to happen now, not later. Because once these technologies become even more ingrained in our lives, it might be too late to course correct. Exactly. That's why the Sora leak is so significant. It's forcing us to confront these ethical dilemmas head on. Yeah, it's like a giant spotlight shining on the challenges and opportunities that AI presents to the creative world. Precisely. Okay, so let's play devil's advocate for a second. 
Some people argue that artists are already benefiting from AI, even without direct compensation. That's a good point. I mean, AI tools can definitely streamline workflows, automate tedious tasks, and even open up new creative possibilities for artists. Right, imagine an artist using AI to generate complex background landscapes for their paintings, or a musician using AI to help them compose a new melody. Exactly. These tools could free up their time and energy to focus on the more nuanced aspects of their art. And AI could even help artists reach wider audiences or experiment with styles and techniques they wouldn't have been able to explore otherwise. Right, it's all about finding the right balance using AI as a tool to augment human creativity, not replace it. But we can't ignore the potential downsides either. What happens when AI becomes so good at mimicking human creativity that it undermines the value of art created by actual people? It's a valid concern. What happens to the aspiring filmmaker trying to break into the industry when an AI can create blockbuster level special effects on a tiny budget? Or the musician who's struggling to make a living when their unique sound can be perfectly cloned by an AI and used in countless commercial jingles without their permission? It's a tough situation, for sure. It's like we're walking a tightrope. On one side, you've got the potential for incredible innovation and artistic expression, and on the other side, you've got the risk of exploitation, displacement, and the devaluation of human creativity. It's a complex landscape, and there aren't any easy answers. But the key is to keep asking these tough questions, to keep pushing for solutions that prioritize both technological progress and ethical considerations. So what can we do? How do we navigate this uncharted territory? and ensure that AI serves as a force for good in the creative world? Well, I think the first step is education. We need to make sure that everyone, from artists to policymakers, understands these technologies, their capabilities, and their potential impact. Right, knowledge is power. The more we know about AI and how it works, the better equipped we'll be to make informed decisions about its development and use. Exactly, and we need to have open and honest discussions about the ethical implications of AI. We need to involve artists in these conversations to hear their concerns and work together to find solutions that benefit everyone. And we need to demand transparency from AI companies. They need to be upfront about how they're training their models and how they plan to use our data. It's not about stifling innovation but about ensuring that it happens responsibly and ethically. Absolutely. This Sora leak has exposed some of the cracks in the system. Now it's up to all of us to push for a more equitable and sustainable future for both AI and the arts. Okay, so shifting gears a bit, let's talk about what this leak means for OpenAI and the future of Sora itself. I mean, on the surface, it looks like a major PR nightmare. It definitely wasn't part of their plan. They were trying to carefully control the narrative, but those artists threw a wrench in the works. They took back the power and said, hey, we're not going to be silenced. And in a way, that act of rebellion might have generated more buzz for Sora than any marketing campaign OpenAI could have dreamed up. It's true. There's no such thing as bad publicity, right? Maybe not. The genie's out of the bottle now. <laughs> and people are clamoring to see what Sora can do. So do you think OpenAI will fast track Sora's public release? They have to be feeling the pressure now with everyone talking about this leaked version. It's possible. They might try to capitalize on the hype and get ahead of any potential competitors working on text-to-video AI. But there's risk involved too, right? Releasing a powerful AI like Sora before it's fully vetted could have unintended consequences. Absolutely. Imagine Sora falling into the wrong hands and being used to create ultra-realistic deepfakes for malicious purposes. Ooh, yeah. We've already seen how much damage misinformation can do. Now imagine that amplified by the power of AI-generated video. It's a chilling thought. Definitely. This technology has the potential to be both incredibly beneficial and incredibly dangerous. It all depends on how we choose to use it. So OpenAI is in a tough spot. They have to weigh the potential benefits of releasing Sora against the potential risks. They're damned if they do and damned if they don't. It's a high stakes game of chess. Yeah. And the whole world is watching. And that's why this Sora leak is so much more than just a tech story. It's a glimpse into a future where the line between human and machine creativity is blurring. And it's a reminder that we need to be actively shaping that future, not just passively observing it. It's time to get involved, folks. The future of AI is in our hands. All right, we're going to take a quick break. When we come back, we'll be diving into some of the fascinating technical details revealed by the Sora leak, and we'll explore the potential applications of this technology. Beyond the realm of art, it's going to get geeky. All right, welcome back to The Deep Dive, everyone. 
We've been unpacking this Sora leak, OpenAI's text-to-video AI, you know, the one that went rogue thanks to those artists. Those digital Robin Hoods, right? Uh-huh. Exactly. We've talked about the ethical whirlwind, hmm. the art-washing accusations, and that big question, how is AI going to reshape creativity? Yeah, it's a big one. But now, let's geek out a little. Let's get under the hood of this thing. What did this leak actually tell us about how Sora works? Okay, so this is where it gets really juicy for all the AI nerds out there. Remember, we've only seen Sora Turbo, the speed-optimized version. Right, like the demo tape before the album drops. Exactly. But even that showed some serious technical muscle. All right, lay it on me. What is you excited? One thing was Sora's handling of transitions, like between scenes. The leaked info suggests it can actually generate extra prompts on its own to make sure the video flows smoothly. Whoa, hold up. So it's not just smashing random visuals together. Nope. It's actually thinking about how to tell a story visually. It's starting to understand film language, how to build tension, create mood. That is next level stuff. Makes you wonder if AI will tell stories better than us someday. Right. It has access to so much data, movies, shows. It could analyze what makes a good story. And create stuff we never even thought of. Exactly. Okay, back to the tech side. You mentioned model turbo. What's the deal with that? So the leaked code hints at multiple Sora models, different styles, even different modes. Like a Swiss Army knife of video generation? Uh-huh, perfect analogy. One model for hyper-realism, like that dog. Right. Another for, say, Pixar-style animation. And those different modes, what could they do? Well, one could be in-painting, adding new stuff to existing footage. Like putting a giant robot in my home movies? Precisely. That would be awesome. Yeah. Okay, so Sora's a powerhouse, we get it. But zoom out for a sec. What does this mean for video generation as a whole? This is a cool toy or something bigger? This is where it gets interesting. Sora's not alone in this race. Oh, right. Runway ML is making waves in Hollywood. Luma AI's got millions of users. Pika Labs is pushing the limits of AI video. It's an AI video arms race. It is. Everyone wants to create the most realistic, versatile, mind-blowing generator. And the speed is insane. Remember, text-to-image AI went from, huh, neat, to, whoa, is that real? In no time. I know, it's already hard to tell what's real online. Exactly. So imagine that trajectory, but for video. Whoa, hold on. In a few years, anyone could make high-quality videos with a few words or a sketch. We're talking about democratizing video creation. On a scale we've never seen. That is huge EE. It is. Think about education. Students making immersive documentaries. Bringing science to life with animation. Entertainment would be revolutionized. Generate whole movies from and books. Video games. Marketing, advertising, everything changes. It's mind blowing But gotta acknowledge the downsides too. If anyone can make realistic videos, what about trust? Right. Deep fakes get easier. Misinformation could explode. It's powerful tech that needs responsible handling. It's like we're getting this amazing gift to shape reality with words and imagination. But with great power comes great responsibility, as That's they said. Exactly. That's why this leak is so important. It's forcing us to talk about ethics, regulation, the impact of AI. Before it's too late. We need safeguards, education, accountability. So this wasn't just some cool videos hitting the internet. It was a wake-up call. A preview of the future coming at us fast. A future with incredible potential, but also potential dangers. And it's a future WE shape. That's right. Well, folks, that's our deep dive into the Sora leak. We covered the tech, the ethics, the possibilities. It's been a wild ride. It has. But the conversation doesn't end here. We want to hear from you. What are your thoughts on all this? Excited? concerned. Head to our website, our socials, share your thoughts. And until next time, <laughs> stay curious, stay informed, keep asking those tough questions, 